Hi everyone, I'm Temi from DG Solar. Today I'm going to take you through the Shine Phone Monitoring app. So if you've just had a grow at system stored and want to understand how to monitor it, you've come to the right place. Um, so your installer would have given you a username and password for the app. And as soon as you're logged in, it will take you to the plant page. The plant page is the central hub for all the data from your system. The first thing you will notice is the power flow diagram. The flow diagram consists of four icons, a sun and solar panels, which indicates how much energy your system is generating. A battery, which shows how much energy is currently being stored and if the battery is charging or discharging. A grid to show how much energy you are currently importing or exporting to the grid. And the house, which shows how much energy your home or business is currently using. You will be able to tell that your system is working and generating because you will see the amount of power the panels are producing, what's going into the battery, what's been exported, and what's going to your load. With this system I'm looking at right now, um, it's quite a sunny day, so the panels are performing very well. You can see 5.12 coming from the panels, but most of that energy is actually going towards the grid. That is because the batteries are fully charged well, it's on 99%, so it's not taking any more charge at the moment. So most of it is going to the grid. And you can see on the right hand side, 0.3 kilowatts going to the property, uh, which the owner is using. So the top screen above the power flow, you can see today's generation, which is 14.1 so far. And it's only two o'clock. I'm assuming this system will probably generate about 20 to 23 kilowatts today. The bottom left you can see the generation for the month and the bottom right you can see the total generation since the system has been installed in that same box on the top right corner you can see the little arrow if you press on that it will take you to a page where you can edit your plan so if you want to you know change your plan name if you want to change your time zone your pv capacity or or the pv picture so you can adjust those settings and just press done once you're finished and it should save that for you. So if you go down, you can also see general overview. Again, it's just more information on the system, how much you've generated today and your total generation, um, how much you've discharged from your battery, how much has gone into your battery, how much you've exported to the grid and how much you've used from what you've generated. If you're looking for more information on your inverter, you can click on the little eye icon on the bottom left of the power flow diagram. This information is more useful for installers rather than customers. However, it's always good to know where to find it. If you scroll down, you will come across a graph section. You can see three types of graphs. The first one, the power energy graph, which shows you the overview of how much your system is generating how much you're importing and exporting from the grid, how much your home demands, and how much energy you're using from your solar and battery. There is also a SOC graph, which is useful for grower users with the battery installed. SOC stands for state of charge, and this graph will give you an overview of the amount of energy available in your battery at specific times. The last graph you will see is labeled charge and discharge, this will show you when your batteries are charging and discharging. Overall, this section is great to see the historical data of your system. You can see this data hourly, daily, monthly, and a yearly overview. So you can see uh, in 2022, this system did about 5,400 kilowatts. And you can see so far 2023 is done about 1100 so it's only april so i'm guessing the system will do something similar to what it did last year so it is really easy for you to track and correlate your data and energy usage grow what i've nicely color coordinated this data so it makes it really easy to read with a key at the bottom also and by clicking on the different colors you can filter the data as shown on your graph. Select solar only, and you can see the production of your system. Select load consumption and battery. You can see how much you're using 
and you can see how much is coming from the battery. So system production shows you how much your system has produced, how much you've used, which is your self-consumption. With this is 4.8, so this system has produced 13.9 kilowatts today. The owner has used 4.8 and you've had 9.1 down to the grid. So the load consumption has been 5.6. So 4.8, which is the self-consumption that's come from the PV, uh, so the PV and the battery, and the rest, which is 0.8, has come from the grid. My device list. So if you select my device list, you will see if you have more than one inverter, they will all come up on your device list. So if you press on that inverter, you can see the data and power flow from the inverter itself this system only has one inverter the data is the same as from the previous page however it is just formatted differently which some people may prefer if you have more than one inverter the device list will show all the inverters you have in your plant you can select between the different inverter to see its data so again um, this graph there shows you the state of charge of the battery so you can see at different times of the day what level the battery is on so right now around two o'clock the battery is on 99 percent so yeah um you can see what data you want to see if you go to the day tab you can see uh the solar production so you can see how much you've produced each day of the month so far at the bottom of the screen we have events control and edit so events would usually log any issue with the inverter so in this case the last fall or warning was on the 16th of july 2022 which is last year july uh, we could see there was a, a pv1 low voltage warning so that has been resolved so whatever issue you have with the, with the inverter it will be logged in the events list and if you select the error it might tell you you know if there's a solution to fix it something you can do easily uh, it will tell you more information about that error. The second tab, which is control, that will bring you to the list of different things you can set the inverter or the system to do. I wouldn't really advise touching any of these settings apart from the bat first setting, which allows you to set the battery to charge and discharge from the grid at certain times. As these are mainly for advanced users or functions for installers. If you are interested in finding out how to force charge your battery from the grid through the ShineFone app, we do have a tutorial already on our channel that goes through that, so make sure to check it out. So if we go back, um, again, edit, you know, you can change the name of the, name of the inverter if you want to, you know, if you don't want it, so just have the serial number, you could put your last name, your postcode or something. All right, if we go back to plant, bottom right you can see the me icon the me section covers your basic settings like your username changing password changing your email address it's pretty much self-explanatory but it's useful to know where to go to change these settings if you click on the service tab at the bottom grow up provides lots of useful videos and user manuals of their product for example how to reconnect your data logger there's also a tutorial over on our youtube channel for this if you need to grow up this section is very useful for finding out more information so that's it for me for today hopefully this was useful introduction into the shine phone monitoring app for those who have a grower system installed or looking to get one soon let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to visit dgsolar.co.uk for more information this has been tech with temi happy generating